away from the camera. They'll all be here in a minute. Oh, look! <laughs> they are here! Hi! Hi! How are you this week? What's the weather like where you are? Ooh, it's rainy at the moment. Mm, can't get to play, can you? No. Kyle's been a little bit upset this morning. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's okay, Kyle. Do you know what was happening? Shall I tell them? Yeah. Kyle and Amy were, well, they were colouring. They were colouring. Amy had some new crayons, didn't she? Yeah. And she'd saved up her money to buy the new crayons, didn't she? And they were colouring and Amy had the, the red crayon. And Kyle wanted the red crayon. Yeah. He was colouring a bus and he wanted to make it a big red shiny bus. And he asked Amy for the crayon, didn't you? And Amy was colouring apples. Apples. She was colouring apples. And she hadn't finished with the red crayon, did she? No. And what did you do? You tried to take it from her. And what happened? No, oh, it snapped, didn't it? The crayon snapped. A lovely new crayon snapped. And you feel really upset about that, don't you? Feel really bad about it. Yeah. You did say sorry, didn't you? But Amy was crying and she ran off. So, yeah, you're feeling a bit sad. Okay, Carl. Oh, I tell you what, I've got a story that might help us with this. Shall we have this story, yeah? It's about Joseph. Um, do you remember where, where we got up to? Uh, Joseph had been in prison and then um, Pharaoh had the weird dreams, yeah? And Pharaoh's cupbearer remembered the man he'd been in prison with and he, he came out of prison, got Joseph out of prison to go and tell Pharaoh what the dreams meant. That's right, seven cows, seven fat cows, yeah, and then seven skinny cows, that's it, seven cows. Ah, do you remember the corn as well? No, just the cows, okay. And Joseph told Pharaoh that the two dreams meant the same thing, didn't they? That there was going to be seven years where they would have big harvests and lots of food, and then there was gonna be seven years of famine, do you remember, where the crops didn't grow, and that Pharaoh needed to find somebody who was wise and clever, who would help store up all the extra food during the first seven years so that they had enough to eat in the second seven years. Yeah, exactly. And that person was... Joseph! Yes, it was. You've got it right. Come away from the camera. It's obsessed with the camera. Okay, so... Egypt did quite well during the famine, but the famine didn't just affect Egypt. No, it didn't. It affected countries around Egypt. And one of those countries was a place called Canaan. And that was where Joseph and his family had been living. Yeah. So back home, Joseph's dad and his brothers started to struggle because there wasn't enough food in their land. But they had heard that Egypt was doing all right, that Egypt had been really sensible and stored up food. So the dad, do you remember his name? Mm, no, he doesn't. Jacob, that's right, Jacob. Jacob said to his sons, right, I, all I need you to do is I need you to travel to Egypt. Now, Jacob was a bit old at this time, so he wasn't going to do it. It was a, a long journey and they didn't have planes and trains and things. I need you to travel to Egypt and go and ask them if we can buy some food off them. OK, now he had 12 sons altogether, but do you remember they had told him that Joseph was dead, didn't they? They didn't they didn't say that they would sold him as a slave. The brothers all those years before told their dad that he'd been killed by a wild animal. Mm. So so Jacob had had 12 sons. He believed one of them was dead. So that left 11, that's right, he had 11 sons left, and one of them, the youngest, who was younger than Joseph, who was called Benjamin, he didn't want him to go to Egypt, no, because he said to his other sons, he said, look, I've already lost one son, I don't want to lose my youngest son as well, so you guys, you go off to Egypt, so off they went. When they got to Egypt, they had to go and see the person in charge of all the food. And that was Joseph. Yes, it was Joseph. 
But they didn't recognise him. They didn't recognise him because, well, about 22 years had gone past, so he changed a bit. But also he was dressed like an Egyptian now. And the Egyptians dressed very differently to the Israelites. The Egyptians would have shaved their heads um, and the men and the women wore really thick eye makeup as well. Yeah, um, we know this from looking at old Egyptian paintings and things. So they didn't recognise Joseph. And they were like, oh, oh, please, big, big Egyptian boss, man. We want, want to bu um, buy some food from you because we, we've got nothing from where we live. Now, Joseph decided to play a little game with his brothers. He didn't tell them who he was. No, he didn't. He didn't say, it's me, Joseph. He played the part of the Egyptian boss man. And he spoke in Egyptian. He didn't speak in their language. And they had to have someone to interpret what he was saying. Yeah. And Joseph said to them, I don't believe you. Oh, no, no, that's what he said. He said, I don't believe you. You are spies. You are spies. Come to look at Egypt and to work out how best to attack Egypt and they were like no 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 because they weren't were they no 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 we just want to buy food and Joseph said tell me then about your family mm. and they told him about their dad and that they'd had one brother that had died it was Joseph I know they didn't know did they no and they told him about Benjamin and Joseph said right I'll believe you I'll believe this story if you go back, you take the food that I'm going to let you buy off me. And when you come back to Egypt, you bring Benjamin with you. Mm. And in the meantime, I'm going to keep one of you in prison until you come back. Oh, it's a bit of a weird game he was playing, wasn't it? So the brothers decided that Simeon, he was going to stay in prison. And the rest of them handed over some silver coins in order to get some sacks of grain to take back with them. Now, Joseph told his servants, fill the sacks up with the grain, yeah, but then put back the silver coins that they've used to buy the food with. I know, wah, crazy. So that's what they did. They put the silver coins back in the sacks. Now, on the long journey back to Canaan, right, the brothers stopped overnight. They would have camped out or something, okay? And one of the brothers opened his sack. And what did he find? The silver coins, I know, and they started to panic. Oh, if the big, big boss man discovers this, he'll think we've stolen the money. What are we going to do? So they panicked and they, they went back to Canaan and they, they said to their dad, Jacob, oh, oh, we're in real trouble, right? This is what happened. We bought the, the grain. We did. We gave the money. But, but one of us has just opened his sack. And the coins are in there. Oh, and the man said, we've got to go back. We've got to go back and take Benjamin. Otherwise, he thinks we're spies. And then the other brothers, they all opened their sacks. And what was in them? All the silver coins. Oh, so they were so frightened. And their dad said, no, no, you are not taking Benjamin back. I've already lost Joseph. I am not losing Benjamin. And if you go back now and they think you've you've stolen all this money, what's going to happen to you all? No, you're not going back. So they left poor Simeon back in prison. Mm, I know, poor Simeon. And they stayed back in Canaan. But of course the famine got worse. And after a couple of years, they'd used up all that food they'd bought. And Jacob said to his sons, you're going to have to go back to Egypt. And the son said, but don't you remember that big boss man? He said, we have to take Benjamin back with us. Because if we don't take Benjamin back with us, he's going to think we are spies and all bad things are going to happen. And Jacob said, all right, take Benjamin with you. But if I lose Benjamin in the same way that I lost Joseph, I'm going to die of a broken heart. I need you to look after him. You can understand that, can't you? Jacob would be sad. And Jacob said, look, take the silver coins back with you. Take more silver coins and take some presents 
just to say how sorry we are and it was a mistake and we didn't mean to take the money. So off they went. The same brothers that had gone initially, obviously minus Simeon who was in prison, and Benjamin. And when they got to Egypt, they went to see Joseph and Joseph told his servants to take them back to his house and give his family a lovely big meal. That was nice, wasn't it? Yeah. They also released Simeon from prison so he could go and join them and have something nice to eat as well because I expect prison food wasn't very nice, was it? No. And then Joseph came and joined them. He still didn't tell them who he was. No, no, he still kept his little secret. Oh, yes. And they gave him the money. They gave him the extra money. They gave him the presents. And he was kind of okay about it. And they chatted and he said hi to Benjamin. And at one point, particularly when he met Benjamin for the first time in, in all those years, he got quite upset, Joseph. And he had to go outside the room and have a little cry. Yeah, because he did get really upset. After they'd eaten, Joseph said to his servants, right, fill the sacks up with grain. Put the silver coins back in again. But this time, put one of my silver cups in Benjamin's sack. I know. <gasps> so the brothers left. They didn't know any of this had happened. And after a little while, Joseph's servants caught up with them and they said to them, our master says, one of you has stolen his silver cup. <gasps> and the brothers went, no, 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 we wouldn't do anything like that. We're really grateful to your master for, for allowing us to have the food. But they searched the sacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where was the cup? Benjamin's sack, I know. And the brothers were terrified. They thought, oh, Joseph's going to have Benjamin thrown into prison. And then when we go back and tell Dad, Dad's going to die of a broken heart. Oh, it was awful. So they got taken back to Joseph's house. And immediately they were like, please, please, we, we didn't do this. This is a mistake. We are so sorry. Benjamin's innocent. And Judah, one of the brothers, said, look, look, our father's already lost one son. If he loses another one, he'll be devastated. Take me. Take me as your slave instead. And at that point, Joseph could bear it no longer. He sent all his servants out of the room and he turned around to his brothers and he said, it's me! It's Joseph! And he told them everything that had happened from the time that he'd arrived in Egypt, how he'd been a slave in Potiphar's house and how that thing with Mrs Potiphar had happened and how he'd then been in jail and then he'd interpreted the dreams in jail and then when he was brought out of jail to interpret Pharaoh's dream and, and, and it all came true and, and Pharaoh made him the most important man in Egypt. And he told them that God had used him to do really, really great things. And his brothers were amazed. And he hugged them and he said he forgave them for all that had happened all those years before. And then Pharaoh heard what had happened because Pharaoh and Joseph were best buds. Pharaoh heard what had happened and he said to Joseph, you must bring all your family to Egypt, get your dad here, get everybody else back, all your brothers, wives and their kids and everything, bring them all to Egypt and they will live in a nice house and we will make sure that they have food. And that's exactly what Joseph did. And imagine how happy Jacob was when he heard not only was Benjamin okay and Simeon was out of jail, but that Joseph was still alive. You see, Joseph was absolutely convinced that because through all those years, no matter what happened, he had stayed true to God, he'd still worshipped God, he'd still said thank you to God for the things that he had in his life. Because of all of that, God had used him to make really, really good things happen. Not just for his own family, but for everybody in Egypt. So Joseph forgave his brothers, didn't he? even after everything they'd done. How do you think they felt, Kyle? Yeah, they felt really, really happy. I mean, they were probably feeling a little bit like you, guilty about what they'd done. And then when Joseph said, I forgive you, then that made them feel really good, didn't it? How do you think Joseph felt when he said he forgave them? 
happy too. Yeah, yeah. Because when we forgive someone, it's like we're forgetting that thing that had happened and we've pushed it aside and we're just getting on with being friends or being brother and sister or, or whatever the relationship is. Let's read some of the Bible verses from, from that story, shall we? We'll read them together. Let's do that. So the story is in the book of Genesis in chapter 45 and the bit we're reading is verses 3 to 15. Joseph spoke to his brothers. I am Joseph. Is my father really still alive? But his brothers couldn't say a word. They were speechless. They couldn't believe what they were hearing and seeing. Come closer to me, Joseph said to his brothers. They came closer. I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But don't feel badly. Don't blame yourselves for selling me. God was behind it. God sent me here ahead of you to save lives. There has been a famine in the land now for two years. The famine will continue for five more years, neither ploughing nor harvesting. God sent me on ahead to pave the way and make sure there was a remnant in the land to save your lives in an amazing act of deliverance. So you see, it wasn't you who sent me here, but God. He set me in place as a father to Pharaoh, put me in charge of his personal affairs and made me ruler of all Egypt. Hurry back to my father. Tell him your son Joseph says I'm master of all of Egypt. Come as fast as you can and join me here. I'll give you a place to live in Goshen where you'll be close to me. You, your children, your grandchildren, your flocks, your herds and anything else you can think of. I'll take care of you there completely. There are still five more years of famine ahead. I'll make sure all your needs are taken care of, you and everyone connected with you. You won't want for a thing. Look at me. You can see for yourselves. And my brother Benjamin can see for himself that it's me, my own mouth, telling you all this. Tell my father all about the high position I hold in Egypt. Tell him everything you've seen here. But don't take all day. Hurry up and get my father down here. Then Joseph threw himself on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck. He then kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Only then were his brothers able to talk with him. You see, forgiving somebody is, is kind of like giving them a present when it isn't their birthday. That, that's nice, isn't it? Getting presents when it's not your birthday. It's nice getting presents when it is your birthday. But unexpected presents, that's what it's like. When you forgive someone, they feel amazing, like you've given them a really nice gift. Oh, hi, Amy. Um, we were just talking about the story about Joseph, yeah? When he, he pretends that he's the great big Egyptian boss man and doesn't tell his brothers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Kyle. What's the matter, Amy? Amy just said she forgives Kyle. Oh, that's, that's lovely. Can I get to the camera? Isn't that, isn't that good? There. Nice brother and sister hug. Oh, that's great. Do you feel better now, Kyle? Yes. And how do you feel, Amy? Yeah, good. Because you got your brother-sister relationship back again. That's good. So, it's, it's a good thing to forgive. Yeah? Um, and sometimes it can be really difficult. Yeah, did you get a bit upset for a bit and stewed on it for a bit? Yeah. But then you thought it would be a good idea, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, again, here in the face. Thank you. Um, now, even though it can be difficult, it's kind of a really good thing to do. And, and yes, we can learn a lot from listening to the Joseph story about forgiving. But somebody who taught a lot about the importance of being forgiving was Jesus. And so if we if we look to how Jesus lived his life and we read what Jesus said um, that's written down in the Bible, then we can learn a lot about how to forgive. And when it's difficult to forgive, Jesus says he can help us do that, yeah? Um, do you all know the Lord's Prayer? 
we'll, we'll maybe say that at the end of Sunday school today, okay? The Lord's Prayer, which is a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to say, and we still say it in church today. The Lord's Prayer has a line in it about forgiveness. Yeah, we'll have a look at that in a minute. But what I want to do first, we've got a new song. We have. We've got a new song about following Jesus. It's got actions as well, and you like your actions, don't you? So we're going to um, have a little listen and, and join in with this song about following Jesus. And remember that by following Jesus, we can learn to be forgiving and kind, just like he was. So let's have a have a little look at this song. You're doing that again. Great. getting on again <laughs> great so that was good wasn't it a good story to learn about forgiving people yeah um it works both ways we need to remember that if we've done something bad we need to be able to say sorry don't we we need to remember to do that to say sorry and then we also need to remember that if people come to us and say sorry for something they've done then we need to forgive them yeah, and the best example, remember, of being kind and forgiving was Jesus. And remember I said he taught us a very special prayer. It's in the Bible. He taught his disciples to say it because his disciples kind of came to him and gone, well, when we talk to God, we're not quite sure what we need to say. Is there something specific we need to say or, or can we just say what we feel like? And Jesus was kind of like, well, 
Just talk to God. But OK, then, these are the sorts of things you should be saying. And we called it the Lord's Prayer. And you might be used to it if you go to church or sometimes schools. Schools say it as well, yeah? And sometimes the language of it can seem a little bit weird, like you don't quite know what it's saying. I mean, yeah, you feel like that. So there is a, there's a couple of versions around that are written specially for children that kind of give you the idea of what it's saying. So we're going to use one of those as our prayer this week, okay? So the words are going to come up on the screen, yeah? Yeah, and you're going to read with me, you two? Yeah, we're going to read it together as our prayer to close this week. But you take care, be kind, yeah? Be loving, yeah? Be ready to say sorry when you need to. And be forgiving, just like Jesus was. So let's say this prayer together. Dear Father God, who is in heaven, your name is the most wonderful, special and holy name. We want you as our king. We want to do what you want us to, here where we are, just like it is in heaven. Please give us all that we need. We are so sorry for the things we do wrong. Help us to forgive others when they hurt or upset us. Don't let us get tricked into doing bad things. Instead, help us to make good choices because you are the king of all kings, the most powerful, the most amazing, beautiful and awesome God, always and forever. Amen. <laughs>